The next question, number 90, is in the name of Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, Minister. Uh, I'm pleased to say that a preliminary first reading agreement was, was achieved on the 9th of April last by the Irish Presidency of the Council on the draft EU accounting directive, which we had set as a priority during the Irish Presidency and which is an important item of EU legislation. The EU Committee of Permanent Representatives approved this preliminary agreement at its meeting on the 17th of April, just pre thus preparing the way for adoption of the accounting directment directive on the basis of the present text. Uh, the directive is important in it th that it updates the EU accounting legislation and provides for simplification and administrative burden reductions in particular for small and medium uh, enterprises. It's one of the final outstanding parts of the single European market. Also under specific provisions of this directive at Chapter 9, information on the revenue streams which governments in resource-rich countries around the world receive from European companies active in the extractive industries and in the logging of primary forests will require to be provided provided by the industries in question. As a consequence, the populations of these countries will have this information available to them. This acts as an accountability mechanism vis-a-vis -vis the government in, in question. In the accounting directive, natural resource companies, large companies and public interest entities will be required to report all payments in excess of €100,000 to governments and local authorities in the countries where they operate. This information will facilitate accountability of both companies and governments to citizens of mineral-rich countries regarding the contracts that they undertake. It will increase transparency of the monies that oil, gas, mining and forestry companies pay to governments and local authorities. Under the reforms, companies will need to publish total payments for each country they operate in and for each project. Taxes on profits or production royalties, dividends, bonuses, related fees and payments for infrastructure improvements. There is no exemption for, disclose, for, for disclosing these details in countries where this may breach local laws. The provision of the accounting directive will take effect uh, in the European Union two years at the latest as for its adoption. Minister, Deputy O'Sullivan. Mm. Yeah, the question had gone in just before the, that directive was signed. So I think the first thing has to be acknowledged is the work that the government has done and the officials um, in support of this. And it's something that the NGOs and civil society had been looking for for quite a while. I noticed that the EU Commissioner, and I think you quoted some of it there, uh, Michel Barnier said, local communities in resource-rich countries will finally be better informed about what their governments are being paid by the multinationals, etc., for exploiting oil and gas fields, mineral deposits, and forests. But what I'm saying is that it has to be more than being better informed because these communities are losing out big time and it's those communities in those resource rich countries who should be seeing the benefits of what is, you know, the, their resources in their countries. One trillion US dollars disappears without trace from developing countries and that's mainly abetted by multinational companies evading their taxes and it's also supported by corruption on the part of officials and it has been called the ugliest chapter in global economic affairs since slavery. So my question is, will Ireland build on what has been achieved in that directive, particularly Chapter 9, to create and to support greater transparency in the form of country-by-country -country reporting? Minister. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, I, I think, well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Deputy O'Sullivan's um, commendation to the officials in my department. I mean, a lot of work was put in. As you probably know, it's getting these across the line is very painstaking work. So uh, I, I will um, convey that. Um, I think absolutely. I mean, this is an area where clearly abuses have developed. Uh, the NGOs have been extremely exercised about it, and rightly so. And this now creates a... Uh, um, a charter for transparency. I understand there are similar provisions included in the US legislation, the Dodd-Frank uh, legislation. So I think you're beginning to see, on a very broad global basis, a, a, a commitment to have more transparency in this area. And I hope that that reduces the sort of abuses the Deputy talks about. Minister, still two minutes remaining. Oh, very good. I think there's also a need at UN level to tackle this whole area of, of tax justice and this illicit movement of, of, of tax from these particular countries. Um, I was just wondering about our government. Did we support inclusion in the review clause of telecommunications and construction and additional sectors that could also be included in that particular directive? Because while I accept about the oil and the gas and the mineral reserves, I think there are other areas as well. It was interesting at the climate change conference recently 
recently, President Michael D. Higgins um, outlined the figures of the extent of the involvement of multinational companies and their dominance of particular items, whether it's food items or whatever, in the developing world. So there is a huge, huge area there, um, and I think there's a great scope. Ireland is so well respected, I think we can build on that and do more on this issue of tax justice. Thank you, Deputy. There's a minute remaining. Uh, well, I'll have to get back to the Deputy on the issue of, of uh, those wider sectors that she mentions. Uh, however, I, I understand that you know, the support of the Council, the Parliament, uh, uh, NGOs, you know, there has been broad-based support for what has been achieved here. Uh, and you know, as always, you know, getting, getting items like this through requires you know, keep getting all your uh, supporters together. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I know that my department was keen to deliver this, and I, I congratulate those involved in, in, in getting it across the line. Uh, but I will get back to the deputy on, on her supplementary question. Half a minute remaining.